My name is Trevor Burton, I'm from Birmingham. Uh, I started playing when I was 13 years old, my first band. It was Trevor Burton and the Everglades. And my first professional band when I was 15 years old, that was Danny King and the Mayfair set. Uh, when I was six, just 16 years old, maybe 16 and a half, uh, we formed the move. And so I was, came into the big time pretty young, you know, pretty quick. Uh, and by the time I was 17, we were in the charts. <laughs> and by the time I was nearly 20, we'd had three top ten, top three singles hits. Trevor is uh somebody I know from again from my from my very young childhood from being in the move I used to have those those move singles uh, were some of the first records I owned um, so you know I'm, I'm aware of, of him and what he's done from way back then you know the late late 60s 67 68 and I got those singles 17 having a ball actually you know but it, <laughs> nothing lasts forever I think. the move it, because I didn't like the whole pop seeing the whole, everything that went with it, the, being told what to do. I never liked being told what to do. And as I got older, I liked it even less. Um, being told what to wear, what to think, where to go. And so I'd had enough, I just quit and I quit. When Blackberry Way uh, was number one in the charts and I was uh, just 19. And the, the pop band thing, I didn't, I was finished with it. I was hanging out with, you know, uh, Steve Winwood and playing with him and Jimi Hendrix and you know those folks and so like the move I was jamming with uh, Jimmy and Steve and I go back and I'm diddly 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 with the move and I thought no I can't do this anymore I have to sort of find myself and find be a bit more serious about things is what I did you know but after that uh, I formed a band with Danny Lane who is with the Moody Blues and Alan White, who at the time was with the Plastic Arno band playing drums. And we had a band called Balls. Steve Gibbons was in that as well. We got a, a nice advance and we spent a lot partying for two, about two years. And I think one single came out of it, which was Fight for My Country. And I played everything on that anyway, except the drums. And the sailors said, I'm going away to fight for my country. And I said you must be some kind of fool Why don't we all just go and live in the mountains High above the sea um, And then that all just fell apart and I got myself into a bit of a state And there was a lot of heavy drugs going down then And one day Tony Secunda who was the moves manager Came round and he, he said you give me a hundred pounds And he said go home to Birmingham, else you're going to die. And I took his advice and I did. And uh, I stayed at my mother's and I got myself cured. Well, I cured myself. Went through it all at my mum's. It's hard. Steve came round one day, his bass player had left. And he said, do you want to come in on it? Steve Gibbons band? I said, yeah, okay. So I was with Steve Gibbons band for eight years. Then we did, well, I lost track of about six albums, something like that. We had a hit with two lane. That's about 13 in the charts. Yeah, I picked myself up and dusted myself down and started over again. Yeah, yeah we toured coast to coast 
two times. First time uh, supporting the Who, which is incredible. That was in, uh, I think, 76, I think. We played to 20,000 people, 85,000 people a couple of places. Then we went back with the Steve Gibbons band after that tour the following year and just toured it as ourselves, and, uh, doing some smaller rock gigs and clubs and that was an eye-opener. <laughs> after doing stadiums and you know colleges and that, doing the small bars and stuff. Touring, we were touring England all the time in Europe, non-stop. And I'd had enough of that as well. And um, Steve said, oh, we're going, to, where was it we were going to? I so I didn't fancy it. He was in a, in a van doing that again. I thought, no, I can't do this. I actually got out of the van halfway to pick up Steve. I said, I can't go, I can't do this. I got a three-year-old son at home. Um, I thought, I ain't gonna do this. There's a little voice saying, you don't have to do this, Trevor, you know. So I said, stop the van. I got out, I walked home. And they hadn't got time to come and find me, else they would have missed their ship, ferry. So I, that's when I left the band, the Steve Gibbons band, started my own band. Trevor's uh, first solo record and uh, it's essentially a solo acoustic guitar and vocal performance with embellishments we've added keyboards and backing vocals and things like that. Um, when we talked about doing an acoustic album for Trevor um, I, first of all I thought it was a great thing for him to do because it's totally different to anything he's done before um, so I was really looking forward to hearing how Trevor would sound and, and to me I very much thought that it'd be a, a very stripped back vibe, um, quite raw. I thought that would be a great thing to hear. Um, so any keys that I wanted to put on it, I knew had to be fairly plaintive, so it didn't take anything away from, from what Trevor might be trying to achieve with this album. It's basic, which is, it's just a guitar and me, except for, I think it's four tracks or five, where Abby Brandt plays the keyboards. We, uh, we recorded it uh, in here in this room, uh, basically in a very uh, kind of open and, and informal way, I'd say. It's, it's, that kind of appeals to the way that I approach lots of the recordings I've done for, for bands and artists in the last few years, where we're, I mean, we're in a studio, but we're just using this one space, and Trevor is just playing the songs live, and we're capturing takes, we're capturing moments of his, of his performance. And so it's a very intimate record, I think, from, you know, very honest, I think, from him and, and you know, and the way it's been put together and assembled and chosen. It's a collection of songs by uh, great songwriters, great songs that Michael came to see me in Birmingham and uh, said, I, I like your voice, I'd like to record your voice. Yeah, did you fancy doing it? I said, okay. Then we got together and I said, I asked Michael to if he could lay some songs on me. And he, he, uh, he said, yeah, and he sent me 40 songs, <laughs> of which I've chose some. And these are from some of the ones that I chose out of the 40. Trevor was really looking for a challenge and was very curious about what was going on in uh, American music today. So I dumped all of these songs into Trevor's lap uh, and he listened to every one and he clearly loved everyone. So some of the songs that I gave Trevor to think about uh, were from a really eclectic 
group of musicians. Punk bands like uh, Johnny Hobo and Days and Days were on there. Mitch the Champ, Trevor really liked Mitch the Champ, and, and we almost we played around with one of his songs, Mitchell Put Your Coat On, but we, we ended up not recording it. Defiance, Ohio, um, and some more independent rock, whatever that means, uh, like John Vanderslice and Jeff Mangum of Neutromo Coatel. So, and then some more mainstream stuff like, like Eddie Vedder uh, from Pearl Jam and, and Tom Petty. So we had represented a lot of different types of music and uh, I think Trevor really had a blast kind of sifting it through it all. Uh, after some time, whittled these big bunch of songs down to 11 songs that I think he felt he could uh, sink his teeth into with authenticity. And I agree with that. These Americana tracks, um, lots of which I confess I didn't know until I'd heard Trevor's versions of them. I loved it, it captured me. Uh, the madness of war uh, and the it, that grabbed me, just the lyrics are fantastic, you know, and it's, it's a grown up song, that one, you know, you, you've got to have been around a bit to appreciate that song, I think. When It All Comes Down is a song of mine. I wrote the song about the Gulf War, when uh, Saddam Hussein was at his maddest peak, and America went in, it's still coming down now, isn't it, you know, it's, everywhere. Well, well, one in particular is Just Breathe. Um, because it's just a beautiful song and because of the nature of the song as well, it's so melodic, it's so easy to put a lot of yourself into as well. And uh, I just thought that the whole track turned out haunting. Stay with me, let's just It's a serious album, really. There's no frivolity on this album. The great stories, great lyrics, and great, great melodies. Uh, you know, they just captured my heart. Two or three of them made me cry, and um, still do. And it was just so soulful, and in a, in a, I don't know how to describe it. It just got my soul in my heart, made me cry. Um, as a man being so honest, uh, and that just captured me, and I just thought, oh, I can do that. That's my life as well. So a very, you know, a very kind of stark song about mortality. And, and when, with the first time I heard that a couple of years ago, I was going through something in my own family, which, which he was relate, relating to in, in that song. And so it really, really hit me, that song. So when, when I, you know, it kind of all happened again when I heard Trevor's version of it. 
Uh, well, there's a, we've tried to get a purity of sound. We've tried to get the kind of unembellished sound of, of Trevor's voice, which is great. And, and his sort of live guitar performances, which are not, they're not studied or slaved over in, in any way. It's, it's, it's kind of, it's a natural, they're natural sounding performances of him doing those songs. Um, I'd heard of the Mountain Goats, but I'd never really heard anything of the, the music. And Michael laid some Mountain Goats stuff, Eldridge was one of them, Andrew Eldridge. And I was on holiday in Greece with my wife and we played it a lot. And it made me go like that, first of all. And then the lyrics, I thought, what's this guy know about Leeds? really a trip to be in the studio and uh, have Trevor crack me up with his very British sense of humor. Um, what was interesting about it is he would uh, sit in the, in the recording studio and belt out a gut-wrenching version of Vic Chestnut song or Be Positive by Refrigerator. Uh, that just drained every ounce of energy out of the room and put it onto the onto the tape. And he would get up afterwards and put his guitar down and, and walk out and get a cup of tea. And uh, after a minute of, of me kind of trying to shake it off, I would uh, walk out there and follow him. And he'd look back and he'd, he'd break into like a Spike Mulligan routine or give me some dry, wry comment that I didn't quite understand, but it, it, it made me laugh. And... Uh, the juxtaposition of his ability to go from from pure, fragile, gentle, uh, sparse songs to just having this real optimism in, in him and, and playfulness, uh, I think, uh, is very apparent on the record, even though uh, it is a dark record. <laughs> <laughs> Trevor and I have played together quite a bit. I think that does show when we get in the studio that we bounce off each other quite well. Um, so it tends to, it doesn't take much getting together because we've worked live so much in the past. Um, I think when it gets to the studio, it is, it is an easier job to, to get things done really. Uh, when we got to Wildflowers, um, I'd obviously heard the original, so because there's such a, a lovely pattern on the on the piano, I didn't want to stray too far from that. But then I still wanted it to be in our style as well. And I think it turned out great, actually. Along, Uh, we've done we've done some extra tracks for the album, which are basically band tracks. So they're not uh, they're electric uh, tracks with drums and bass. And uh, Ian Button, who's a fantastic musician in his own right, uh, had a, a band for years called Death in Vegas, uh, which was really amazing. Now uh, is part of the uh, music collective Paper Nut Cambridge. Uh, he's he moved from his production tasks over to 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 behind the drums, and Luke from Rain Studio came in and engineered those. Uh, we brought in 
dangerous Derek Wood, who's uh, been a friend of Trevor's for years, to play bass, and he has just a very soulful groove, soulful rock and groove to to his his playing. And it was great because um, to go from the the stripped down acoustic numbers and then get us all together in the studio as a band, um, it was nice to sort of unleash. I think they came out great. I think they have Tre Trevor's really distinctive stamp on them. Uh, they were a jam doing some of the electric stuff. That was good fun. That was good fun. So, but it was just a rhythm that cap captured me and Jack White's great guitar player. And I, I, just, I just loved the song. American music, it's, it's been my life really, as well as the, I mean, I had the, the, the uh, British side with the, the Beatles and Sounds and that, but really all their influence came from America. And, and so did my influence, you know, right to where rock and roll started. I've given everything to it and it's given me a lot back. It's given me, I've traveled the world, uh, I've been on hit records and 